deep in the forests of Finland, where the snow lays deep and white. Where polar bears roam, there is a boulder like none other. Some say it has holds so small, only a Finnish touch can feel them. And so sharp, a penguin flipper is needed for grip. This climb lay unrepeated until last week, when the strongest Scotsman on earth touched it with his wee mutant fingers. And now, everybody, it's my turn. Burden and Dreams is one of the hardest boulder problems in the world, but what is the hardest? That's what the comments section is for. It gets the grade of 9A and it was the first in the world. It's come into the limelight in the last few months as Aidan Roberts built a replica. And some of the strongest climbers in the world have come here to try that replica. Now it's my turn to try it. I don't know why it's the hardest climb in the world. I can't climb this hard. <laughs> so the boulder starts on these two holds. I think it's the crux move of the problem is the first move. I think that's the hardest move. Will was saying that he thought it was potentially from 8C in a move, and he thought he had never done a move as hard as this move on the replica. And considering Will has flashed 8B+, that's a pretty hard move. A replica is all very well, but how does it actually compare to the real deal? You know, the real boulder. We asked Will Bosey himself. So it's hard to grade the replica now individual moves because I, I, it's been a while but the first move was at least 8b plus single move on the replica uh, potentially 8c i mean it's it took me 10 nine sessions to do that first move and that was you know using the pulley assistance everything to like learn the movement get it dialed <laughs> it's a pretty hard move i know that this next bit this is called the footwalk and then you have a, a hard match in and then i feel like this next move is potentially one of the easy ones, easier. And then there's another hard move to get to the, the top there. If I can hold every position, I would be very, very happy. We may as well start at the bottom and work our way to the top. As a climber, I would say my specialities lie in lengths of rock that are a thousand times the length of this, but potentially a thousand times easier move. Ooh, you know what? I just put my hand on that, mm -hmm. and for the first time I felt like that was a better hold. <sighs> you know what? I'm actually pretty happy with that. I'm not gonna lie. I'm actually quite over the moon with that. That was first effort. And I basically, I freaking, I freaking basically tickled the hold. So I held position one, convincingly, I would say, and moved off it. So I'm really happy with that. So position two is this one and this one. And then you have to do like a foot walk. So if I can, so I'll just try and hold that to start with. Oh, you know what? Flipping happy with that. That was the foot walk, apparently the foot walk. So foot up, match in, left foot down. Didn't quite get the right foot out though. I may as well just try and come into that, might I? I am actually, I'm actually suddenly getting more motivated. <sighs> nice, come on Pete, come on. Whoa. I mean, it was something. So to do that move, I'm gonna have to go into full half crimp so I have room because at the moment I'm doing that which makes that hold pretty good what well, well I say pretty good it makes it better what's the hardest grade you've ever bouldered Pete uh 8b but on crack what's the hardest you've ever bouldered sober <laughs> oh Pete come on <sighs> touched it position number three held so I've got three to go. I'm 50% there. Who thought that was going to happen? None, none of you guys thought that was going to happen. I didn't. Right, so next position. That. So position number four is this one and this one. Come on, Pete. Hey. That was nearly a move. <laughs> that was the, I think I can do that move. I can do that move. Yeah, I held position four and I nearly moved into position five. I might try that move again. I was quite close to that. Oh, no. 
think I just need to rest actually. Okay, so this isn't really a replica like you might have seen me and Tom do in the past, like we've done down in the cellar and also in his garden where we've like boshed a few wooden beams together. <laughs> These holds have been 3D scanned uh, initially by Aidan Roberts, who then took them to a company in Chesterfield and then, you know, made them into actual, as close as you can get, replicas to the holds that are on Burn the Dreams in Finland. Do you know how much the replica cost, uh, like a ballpark figure? I think it's quite a lot of money for them. Um, they are big holds, to be fair, and I think they're fairly custom. I think, I feel like someone said, I'm not, I don't actually know, so this is just quoting off someone else, I think maybe 700? Yeah, so when we look at all these like little dimples and rugosities and how the hold is shaped, and the friction on it, then that's essentially as close as we can get to Finland, I think. Do you think the real thing or the replica is more difficult? The replica is definitely harder, just because the last move is so hard on it. The thing is you could do the first move and then because the middle's easier, I think, on the replica, you could probably get to the last move a lot more, but Actually doing the last move, it was like such a low percentage, one move, sort of eight people, that would be really hard. We're going to go from position four and we're going to try and do the move into position five. Yes, Pete! <laughs> Come on! <sighs> I was alright. I did the move and got my foot up. That was not too shabby. That was position four moved into position five and then went to position six. I had felt these holds before the session, but I've never felt this top one before. It's a three finger drag. It feels like there's a little sharp scoop for the ring finger. It's quite a good drag, actually. I've seen some um, footage of Sean Rabatou. I know he's an absolute freaking machine and beast, but he gets that his hand comes off and he's just swinging on this top one. So, oh no, if you're a beast, you could hold that one hand. It's very different to the replica where the last move was one of the hardest on the real thing. Although it's still probably like an 8A one mover. If you do it right, it, it feels super chill. Okay. Okay. Go on, match. Go on. <sighs> hey. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Now, that, I mean, holding the position is fine. Moving to it would be really hard. Six positions. All six positions. That's really quite surprised me. Oh. I touched it, but I, I didn't believe. There was no belief. Zero belief. Pete, why yeah. are you angry? Okay, so I've just realized that I'd used the wrong foothold at the beginning. I used this to pull on for the first move. And actually, I believe it is left foot on here. So I haven't held position one yet. So the plan now is to try and pull on in position one. I think this is definitely going to be harder. First off, because the foothold is on a 45. Uh, the feet are a little bit more spread, higher. Um, so you're more on your arms and you're less down on your foot. <laughs> oh. I can see why that is painful. I feel like, I mean, I feel like I held it. I feel like I held it, but um, it would be nice to be able to do a little bit of lower down and pull back up. I would like to do that. It's there. Oh, it's that, a thumb there. I mean, I did, the, I did what I was after. <laughs> Are you going to go back and try the replica again? I was debating it, actually. Um, I think it could be quite a funny little, like a big like, little five minute video going back and getting shut down on the first move. On the real thing, I felt really strong. Last, last three sessions on every move, I felt really good. Like the first move I did at one point like nine times in a row without dropping. But like, so I felt like incredible and I want to go back and then see if the first move feels like that or if it just still feels 
absolutely desperate. Yeah, I'm definitely going to get back on it. So you've done two 9A boulders. What is next on the list? I mean, ideally, what it, like I, I didn't even plan to go to Berlin. I was meant to be in Arco trying Excalibur. I really want to go back for that, but it's kind of getting a bit hot now, I think. So that might have to wait for winter. I'm really keen to go to America, check out Sleepwalker, you know, the low start to that, and Sean's boulder Megatron as well. But I've never climbed in America, so I'd be almost more keen to do like a trip at least first where I go around and I actually check out a lot of different boulders. And I want to root climb, but I keep getting distracted by bouldering, you know? I was just about to say that. I was like, Will, you're a boulderer now. <laughs> I know, I know. Full on boulderer. But, you're going um, to gonna go back to the roots and the moves on roots are going to feel so chill. Yeah, and then maybe I'll take up trad climbing. We'll see. Well, that was going to be my next question. When are we going to see you on the trad and the cracks? I'm psyched. I was uh, maybe going to go and try Shem de Fur with uh, one of my friends from Edinburgh, actually, when I'm up. Yeah, that's got cracks and trad, so we'll see. It is happening. <laughs> Maybe me and Tom can do some uh, some trad climbing teaching videos with you. E That'd be good. I'd be psyched. E E1 to E10 in 10 days. So that's all I've got time for in this session. I've actually got the Crackfest event, which is starting in about nine hours. So I need to go to bed and get some sleep. <laughs> but you should also check out Will's channel because he's got loads of videos of the replica and him trying the actual burden of dreams out in Finland. It's like popcorn watching. So go and check out his channel. Everybody who's trying it. You're all beasts. Smash it out. Do it.